Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us on the sixth episode of the Let's Dream podcast. My name is Casey Lucid, and this is co-host Lee. Hey, welcome, everyone. Today, we're going to be telling some spooky dream stories in the spirit of Halloween. And so me and Casey here are just going to go back and forth, uh, but I think we're going to start off with our own personal stories, and then we'll get to some stories that we found on Reddit or the internet. All right, so... Here's mine. So when I was a little kid, about maybe around six or eight years old, I remember watching a a serial killer uh, documentary, or it was on the news or something like that. And you know, the whole family disappeared, or you know, it was a kind of a tragic story. But I can't remember much of that. So that night, I went to sleep, and in that dream, I remember that I woke up. And it wasn't my house, and uh, it was more of a classic kind of 80s house, um, except everything was pretty bare, minimum. There's no decorations, just like a chair in the living room. Yeah, so little old me, I was walking through the house trying to find my mom. And it was really eerie because I could feel that there was no one in the house yet. You know, I was still trying to find her uh, somewhat desperately, and I had a... And then I went to one of the rooms looking for her, and I, f- I was looking at this closet, and I just had a really bad feeling about the closet. I didn't check it because it made me feel uh, creeped out. And so I remember going back into the main room and looking at the front door, and I noticed that it was open. It was like the door was wide open. And in that moment, I just felt like I was alone, and I felt abandoned. And that's the only dream story that... The creepiest dream I've probably ever had. Man. It was interesting. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good example of how even if something, like even if something fantastic or imaginary doesn't happen in dreams, even if there's like a minimal visual, sometimes it's just, it's the feeling that you get from dreams that can be very uh, lasting and impactful. Yeah, it felt like something was going to jump out at me like any second or rather, but it never did. So the suspense kept, you know, building and building until like that dreadful feeling at the end there. Man, I hate dreams like that, which is just like a tension. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, So a dream story that I wanted to share is, and this is from when I was a teenager and it's it's a very vivid dream story. Um, it's it's one of the dream stories that actually made me become more interested in dreams and just continuously journaling dreams. But basically, in the dream, I was in this valley that was just surrounded by these mountains. Everything was kind of lush and green, clear blue sky. And in the valley, there was this market. And I was just walking through the market and... Um, it was just like a regular farmer's market, but I come across a booth where it's this old lady and she's just selling, I don't know, just kind of like weird little knickknacks and um, charms and things like that. And um, I see this little, this little cage, this little square cage box um, that's made out of metal and inside of it... Um, is a is a cricket and i was really weirded out i was like why do you have this and the old lady who had like the she looked really kind of creepy like very very old and um she hands it to me and she gives it to me and she says that i can have it um to protect me and and after that i was i'm like okay i was kind of weirded out by her so i just walk away and as i'm walking away It starts to get dark very quickly and the entire scenery kind of changes to being very like reddish and muddy and dark and then it just turns into night and it's like a very, very dark night and atmosphere. And and then there's all these eyes and like glowing eyes and shadowy creatures with claws and teeth that just, that are just outside of my arm's reach as I'm walking through it and I'm really freaked out and then they're and then they like slowly start like clawing at me here and there 
as I'm walking through. And then I shake the little cricket box and this really, really disturbing frog sound comes out of it. And, and all the demons like back away and, and then I keep walking and I'm trying to like get away from them. And, but there's like a huge swarm of them, like an army of them. And I'm in the middle and I'm just walking through. And every time I shake the little box, this really disgusting frog sound comes out of it. And I, I don't like the sound, but it keeps all the shadowy demons at bay. And so in my dream, I'm just kind of like frantically like walking and running. It keeps alternating because I'm trying to like avoid being intercepted by the crowd and then i'm perpetually shaking the box to keep them at bay and then i woke up yeah. that's pretty awesome that's like a fable yeah it so <laughs> so you had this swarm of demons or whatever and then every time you shake the box it would uh back make them back off and you're traveling along this like path to who knows where given by to a scary old lady who can who you can barely trust it's like it's like a fable disney or something yeah i mean that's cool i'm i'm, I'm very much into folklore and uh, i like i've always been into folklore and um i think that probably impacted me but i also remember at that time in my life i was very stressed out and there was a lot of stuff that i had to do all the time that i didn't want to do so i think there was some symbolism there that my my brain just kind of manifested into the dream but yeah it was very like i remember waking up from that dream and just being like really kind of like shaken like what the hell just happened <laughs> which you know dreams can be like that yeah, um so did you have another one that you wanted to share or maybe one from the forums or so that was the only one i could remember i don't think i have too many uh, nightmares or spooky dreams okay if i did i i that's the only one i remember from my past anyway Okay. All right. So I think we'll, we'll get into some stories from uh, the internet or and from Reddit. Okay. All right. Um, I have a short one here. Um, I call this one zombie songs. So in this dream, I was watching the evening news and it said that there had been a zombie outbreak near my area. They said the zombies apparently sang a tune that made your heart dance to the music. All of a sudden, I heard a singing outside the window. My heart began jumping in my chest. The zombies appeared at the window broke through it and started to tear me limb from limb and that's where that ends oh man you know it's as i looked through and talked to people on the forums about scary dreams I, that's i think that's a common thing i don't know if it's just because of how long people have spent you know like running from one another or wild animals but that's a very common theme that seems to happen is like just running away from people or animals or creatures yeah, I think a lot of tension is just being chased by something, but, you know, never directly encountering it. Or you may encounter it, but, you know, it's um behind you and that kind of uh, chasing and fear and anxiety is uh, upon you. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, okay, let's see. So I have, um, I have one here that I thought was kind of interesting because uh, it displays how we are affected by everything that we observe and experience while in waking in waking life. So this is from the user Schmudley. Um, they posted this dream on Reddit. Um, they told me I could share it with everyone. It's uh, basically they were a child and they had watched the Friday the 13th movies at a friend's house. And it was, I guess it was like a recurring marathon. So they ended up having a dream where Jason Voorhees was walking after them and he was wearing, you know, his iconic ho hockey mask and also um, chef's hat and an apron, I guess like a cook, and a, and a giant meat cleaver. In the dream, the dreamer had dreamt that they were running away, but he was always behind them, like just a few steps behind. So th the dreamer was caught in, in this loop of just trying to run away, perpetually running away, but Jason was just a couple of steps behind them. And that was that was the dream, and eventually they woke up. Okay, but that sounds like such a crappy dream. Like you, <laughs> you know, when you're watching, you're watching a scary movie, and you see like the person is like running at a full sprint, and then you see like the killer just like gently walking, just casually strolling, and then the person is clearly just booking it, but somehow this killer is always just a few steps behind them. 
Yeah, that's your classic uh, slasher horror, man. Like that's that's how that always gets you. You know, they always uh, for Jason, he's always uh, preying on l- little teenager high schoolers that are um, trying to trying to get their game on. But uh, he always interrupts <laughs> and he's like, "No, you can't. This is." This is a Christian horror movie and then, you know, proceeds to slash them. I just thought it was really funny because that's something that frustrates me whenever I watch scary movies. And um, it's interesting that this dreamer, their mind picked up on that and then just kind of like threw it in a loop in their mind. I guess that person might have been really scared of Jason for whatever reason. All right. So uh, I have another one. This one's called, I don't know if I named this one or the username, but... It's named Amusement Park of the Dead. I had a reoccurring dream where I was in an amusement park. The sky was dark and overcast. All the rides were rusty and broken down, but for some reason they were still moving. At first I thought there were people on the rides, but then there were actually rotting corpses. Every time the ride went around a corner or over a bump, the corpses slowed down. The corpses slumped from side to side. I was the only living person in the whole park. The dream kept coming back probably three or four times before it finally stopped, and I always woke up sobbing and terrified. Oh. Uh, yeah, this person had a very hard emotional reaction to this one. No. Very yeah, just, visual. Um, yeah, just imagine being, I guess, on a roller coaster, and you see all these, like I guess, skeletons or rotting things just move, but not of their own will, but just from the momentum of the rides, and it's just... And then you realize you're the only person that's living. And then, oh. You know, that's that's one thing that I I know I've had dreams. I can't think of like a specific dream before, uh, like right now. But I know before I've had dreams where I was like the last man on earth. Those are the freakiest. Like I hate those dreams where there's like nobody else. No matter how hard you search, there's nobody else. I hate those dreams more than anything. But let's see. So, okay. I I have another dream here. Um, this one I really liked. I'm actually making an illustration. Um, well, I, usually I sketch out and make drawings out of pretty much all the dreams that people share with me. But this one was really, really interesting. So this, this is what the dreamers said. They posted this on Reddit and they said, um, the dream that they had was um, there was a room... And he was, they were, the dreamer were like just an observer, you know, like some, sometimes you have those dreams where you're not in the dream, you're just kind of observing everything like in the movie. Or in third person. Right. Yeah. And so in this dream, a woman was standing in front of a window and the window looked into another room and there was a pale person devoid of any expression that popped up in front of her for half a second and which caused the lady to jump backwards in fear and she fell back. And then this person teleported behind her and started talking to her in her, like started whispering something in her ear that was like in a fairly normal voice, but it sounded uh, like what they were saying was kind of like normal, but it just, it sounded like a evil villain type voice, I guess. The thing that happened was that this person ended up pinning the, the lady down and holding her down on the on the floor and then a creature that did not look human reached out and started eating the lady's the lady's body like i guess a creature came out from this person's uh chest and just like started eating the lady and it had like a beak and as the dreamer is watching all of this somehow they knew that the creature that was inside of the normal looking person that was holding down the lady like the creature and the and the person had some sort of a relationship, uh, like a romantic relationship, and then I guess the the person was trying to feed the creature. It was very disturbing, and the the dreamer mentioned that the the woman's cries and shrieks were extremely hard to listen to. So they had it was like an impactful experience, but uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the dream. They just dreamt that like a monster kind of devoured someone. All right, and she even got jump scared, a cheap jump scare. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that's like, uh, yeah, man, dreams can be so realistic and sci-fi and movie-like sometimes. Oh, yeah. That did remind me a little bit of Aliens for whatever reason. I'm, I'm not sure why. Yeah. 
Yeah, jumping out of the chest, I guess. Yeah, yeah. All right, I got this one called Don't Wake Up. Um, also, keep in mind, some of these people might not be native English speakers, so their grammar and dictation might not be correct. So, when I was seven or six, I had a terrible dream. I usually had nightmares, so the dream was pretty normal till I kind of just cut out. And then the, the scene changed, and it was completely, a completely white room, kind of like an old photo. And there was a girl. She looked like the grudge with a long Cheshire cat smile. And the user mentions that they can um, do this thing where they can just wake themselves up from a dream without much trouble. So I start trying to wake myself up. As I'm doing this, the girl whispers, don't wake up, over and over again, getting Ooh. louder and louder till she's screaming at me. At this point, I'm having a panic attack, shaking and willingly my, willing myself to wake up. Finally, I can feel myself starting to wake up and she just stops. Gives me one last smile and says, don't wake up. And I woke up in a cold sweat and in tears. And I had to sleep with my parents for at least a week. Oof. That ending kind of made me get a little chill there. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, man. I, I like that one, though. It's, it is a, it's a proper, like, spooky sk sk story, even though, I'm, you know, sorry for the user. It must have been, like, absolutely terrifying, but uh, it's... Yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, that's one thing I often think about is, you know how most scary or spooky events kind of happen at night? I wonder if that's because... If that, I wonder if that has something to do with the fact that we're... Uh, like, humans are diurnal creatures, you know, meaning we are awake during the day and we sleep at night. And so I wonder if you're sleep deprived, I mean, that probably greatly increases the chances of you like hallucinating or hearing something or seeing something that actually isn't really there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I think, and, and that dream is also a good example of how, you know, something that you dreamt had a strong enough of an impact to where it affected your waking life. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you know this, but you know when little kids play that Bloody Mary game where they go in the bathroom and flush the toilet twice with the lights off and then say Bloody Mary three <laughs> times in the mirror? So, you know, I found out that when you look at the mirror um, long enough in the dark, you know, you, you can make out certain things. And then after a while, you're, you're, the image in the mirror will distort and that's where kind of Bloody Mary comes in. You know, and I found out okay. that that is your brain trying to piece together um, certain information on the image. And that's why it's distorting because it's also in the dark and your your brain cannot process like what's going on in the dark so much. And that's what makes the uh, image distort and that, you know, thus making Bloody Mary eventually. Okay. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. It makes total sense when, when you mention like when you explain it like that. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, um, I have another one. This is a short one, but um, it, it felt very real. So I wanted to share it. Um, so this is another Redditor told me where they had dreamt of their two deceased grandparents um, that were brought back by a seance and they were wearing all black sitting in wheelchairs looking uh, emaciated. Um, and the grandfather um, um, had a... So the, the, the grandfather kind of like they... Uh, explained like they visualized him as a uh, kind of like that old uh, farmer like uh, from that uh, painting I forget the name of it but basically just like an old farmer is what they kind of visualized him as and the grandmother had a bright red hair but um, but she looked very dark almost black in the dream and her mouth was much bigger and broader than any human and her eyes were black and wide and she had old like witch boots and she was hazy around the edges and the grandfather grandfather was sitting there looking weak and the head was cocked somewhat sideways and the grandmother was almost floating out of her chair and she was coming towards the dreamer laughing and then that's where the dream ended um i hate how dreams can often like leave you hanging but maybe in this case it's probably a good thing <laughs> whenever it's like a scary dream i think i think most time when people have a certain nightmare they wish they were out of it sooner than later 
Yeah. Because it can get um, even worse for most people, I'd say. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, that struck a chord with me because uh, I often have dreams of my dead aunt. Um, I mean, she died when I was eight. Um, so it's been a really, really long time. But to this day, I'll have dreams where she comes in and visits me. And, and they're never scary. Sometimes they're intense, but they're never scary. To the point where, like, if I see her in the dream and if I'm lucid, like, I'll just say like, Hey, you know, what's up or what's going on. But <clears throat> and there's a lot of people that dream of their dead relatives. And I think that probably has something to do obviously with missing them. And then your brain is trying to cope in a certain way. Um, but I just thought it was interesting that, you know, it's kind of like a similar theme amongst a lot of dreamers. You know, that that's an excellent point, especially if you think about it in the old world terms where they had a kind of think about death and it's just a process that couldn't be understood. You know, someone flops over one day and you're like, Hey, get up. And they don't, you know, how do, how do you process that? Yeah. Yeah. So I have a, I have a family one that I'd like to share too. This one's a little bit more spooky, I guess, but I, I do like the premise. Uh, it's called family portrait. I had a dream once where my family and I was hanging out and I were hanging out at a, in a wood workshop. We were making all sorts of stuff out of wood and suddenly my uncle asked me to come with them to the other room. When I, when I entered, I see bizarre paintings of dead people everywhere. One, one in particular had a saw in her throat and that's when I noticed. That's my mom in the picture. All of a sudden, I see all the pictures are of my family members. I run back to the old room and see my entire family lying dead in the same exact positions as in the pictures. I turn around and my uncle is standing holding a picture of me with a saw in one hand and his head in the other. Oof. Oof. Man. That could be a movie. Yeah. I think that's a really cool setup for, you know, a cool kind of horror film or something. And, you know, obviously it has something to do with family. Um, or <laughs> or not, but it's a, maybe this person saw like a horror movie and like, um, was really close to the family, so it, you know, attribute a lot of things from the family and the movie together. But yeah. I, I think this story is really cool. Yeah, <laughs> man. I'm sure, like, if we just dig through the forums, there's tons and tons of <laughs> nightmares like that that people have had. But, um, well, uh, so did you have any others that you wanted to share, or? Uh, yeah, sure. I got another one I could share. Um, this one's called School Brain Drain. There's a dream where I was in a classroom, although I'm unsure of the exact circumstances. I recall feeling paranoid about the people behind me, and then that I had been shot in the upper back of my head. The last thing I remember in the dream is the sensation of bone and brain matter flowing down my throat, which I felt in great detail. It was like I could feel my skull collapsing, my brain liquefying as it all spiraled down my esophagus. The unsettling thing was that I wasn't really particularly worried about it at the time. I remember waking up and thinking, well, that's how you feel right before you die if you're shot there, I guess. And you know, <laughs> that's it. Man. H have you ever had a dream where you died in the dream, but you kept dreaming the dream after that? Um, No, but I've had dreams where I'm falling off a building. And then okay. right as I hit the ground... I hit the floor of my bedroom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that's funny. Um, yeah, I, I've talked to a bunch of people where it's like they they dream that they die, but then they continue dreaming that same dream after they had died, which it's, it's a really weird phenomenon to think about. Yeah, that's interesting. But also, I like this story because this user really felt the experience of everything right like explaining the the brain matter flowing down the throat and just not the feeling of dying but just how you know in a dream you can definitely feel yeah. other senses with it yeah that's the thing dreams can be just as real as this reality right now so i, I like to remind people of that every now and then um and so uh, i would like the the last dream story that i'll share is is um is a scary dream that i had and this was maybe four years ago, um, where basically what happened was um, I had done something and Morpheus, the the Greek god of dreams, 
had banished me to this planet where I, I had to live in this building that was basically an insane, insane asylum. And everybody that I knew, everyone was insane. Like absolutely everybody, like all my friends and family, everybody was insane. And I was the only sane person there. And everyone would do things like they would hurt themselves. And like some of them were like eating themselves. And it was like a really disturbing imagery. And I was, and I was sentenced to live there for one year, one human year. And after I lived there for an entire year, um, I remember the only way that I managed to make it out is because I knew that I was dreaming. It was so realistic and it was so, I don't know, visceral and disturbing that, that um, it just made an impact on me. So I wanted to share it. But that, that was pretty much the dream. After, like I was just basically sentenced to an insane asylum for a year. And did you feel like you spent a whole year there? That's the thing, man. Like it's, it felt like a year. Like it's <laughs> that's just so strange when talking about dreams. Like that person that was running from Jason, they were just caught in a loop. You know, it's like it's just weird how your mind can do those tricks on you. It's like because I've had dreams, and I've talked to people on the forums too, where they've had dreams where it just felt like they come back, and it just felt like they had an entire different life play out. And you know, that's absolutely amazing. Or terrifying if you're uh, prone to um, nightmares or such yeah. uh, night terrors, even. Yeah, but um, but yeah. So that that was pretty much um, that was pretty much all all that I wanted yeah. to share. So I think the thing with nightmares and night terrors, it's a lot more common than people realize, and there are definitely reoccurring themes that um that you manifest in your own mind. Um, and, you know, a lot of these people, they're, they're kind of at a loss at what to do about them, you know, and, sure. you know, quite a bit of users that I found while I was scrounging through the, uh, forums, it, they were like, uh, did anybody else have a dream like this and such and such and such, you know, and I think they're like seeking a sort of help there. Yeah. And I think honestly, whenever I've had nightmares or uh, a series of nightmares, even if they weren't recurring, because uh, I hardly ever get recurring dreams. I mean, there's common themes and common characters, but the dream itself is rarely the same exact one. But writing things down, I think definitely helps because then you can kind of analyze your own thoughts. And then lucid dreaming, man, if you can lucid dream, I've actually resolved nightmares just by lucid dreaming alone. Uh, but I'm very comfortable with lucid dreaming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, by writing down, you kind of see what themes you can go over and over. And if you're, if you, even if you go lucid, you can, um, you know, have take control of whatever situation you're in. And as we kind of discussed throughout this, um, the dream stories just now, like a lot of these experiences can feel definitely real. You can feel, you know, blood, you can feel the terror, you can feel the dread, um, just like you would in real life. And I think that if you have a little bit of courage and you can, you know, face these kind of um, things in your dreams or in real life by writing them down and see what's going on, you can hopefully potentially eliminate these stressors um, in the future. Yeah, definitely. I think it's I think it's possible. Sometimes it's easier said than done, but Absolutely. I think I think it's definitely possible. Yeah, I, I think it's a great first step anyhow. Yeah, I agree. Well, that's pretty much it. That was it for episode six. I uh, thank you all for joining us on the Let's Dream podcast. If you want to see any visuals or drawings or illustrations of the things that we've mentioned, you can always either go to our website of letsdreampodcast.com or look on our Facebook page, Let's Dream Podcast, or Instagram, which is Let's Dream IG. And pretty much um, anywhere on social media. Um, and if you have any interesting dreams you want to share with us, feel free to do so. We're always interested in hearing them. And again, thank you for listening. And we'll see everyone next time. All right. And stay safe and happy Halloween, everyone.